Tech giants are being criticized for the role that false medical information may have played in the recent measles outbreak in the Pacific Northwest. Congressman Adam Schiff sent a letter to Google and Facebook last week asking how they manage posts from the anti-vaccine community. Schiff said he is deeply concerned about declining vaccination rates, and he asked for additional steps to address the growing problem. And we reached out to Google and Facebook for their comment. Google said that YouTube, which it owns, is linking certain health topics to third-party sources. Facebook said, quote, we've taken steps to reduce the distribution of health-related misinformation on Facebook, but we know we have more to do. We're currently working on additional changes that we'll be announcing soon, always soon. CBS News contributors Dr. Tara Narula and Nick Thompson, editor-in-chief of Wired magazine, join us now. Nick, I want to go to you first here because this is, reminds me of the conversation we've had about political misinformation. Absolutely. It seems like things that have feeling spread a lot more quickly than things that are filled with a lot of facts. That is absolutely, that is the core of this problem. Social networks are based on emotion. So content that makes us feel emotional, whether it's fear, whether it's uncertainty, mm -hmm. that spreads really quickly. So as they say, a lie gets halfway around the world before truth can get its boots on. Science Magazine made an interesting point here. They said false news was more novel than true news and thus, and people were more likely thus to, sh to share it. It's more novel and there's also an asymmetry where the people yeah. who are spreading truthful information are reserved and thoughtful and the people who are passionate yeah. about misinformation are out there just putting tons of stuff on the internet. So it's passion and there's an asymmetry. Are you finding, Tara, that your patients are more skeptical when they come to you or they come armed with, this is what I learned on the internet? Absolutely. We see it very often. You know, health information, they say, has now become democratized, which in a way is good. We want our patients to be educated, but certainly I think there's more of a lack of trust in the medical profession, number one. And number two, people don't always see their doctor as the final authority. Yes. They go to Google, Dr. Google, to get a second opinion. They mm -hmm. go there because it's easy. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have any judgment. They don't have to pay a copay. Uh, and so, and they don't have to make a time for an appointment. But, you know, the, the issue is that we see this being a very widespread, not just relating to vaccines, but medications like statins, supplements uh, that promote uh, wellness, anti-aging, weight loss, uh, anti-cancer or cancer treatments uh, that are alternative. And the issue is that, you know, some of these misinformations can be kind of ridiculous and maybe not so harmful, like taking a chocolate every day is going to help your heart. Some That's can not be, good for you? Well, <laughs> 40 push-ups, 40 push-ups. Some yes, can right, be right. a little misleading, yeah. but some can be outright dangerous, as we see in the case with vaccines. Some yeah. can be costly, uh, and some can just promote unnecessary fear. So what's a patient to do? Well, a patient should talk to their doctor. <laughs> a patient should be skeptical. And I also think one of the really important lessons is that Dr. Google can get better. Mm -hmm. The engineers can make the internet a source of better information by changing the way the algorithms work. But the algorithm makes them money in its current yes. form. form yeah. So if feelings are what pay the salaries of everyone working at these tech companies, mm -hmm. how can one doctor at a time really overcome that? Well, in the current structure they do, but it's also the case that all of those people who work at the tech companies, they've gotten slammed in the last year because of political misinformation, because of medical misinformation, because of all these problems. I actually think in the long run, if the only thing you were concerned about was the bottom line of Silicon Valley, you would still change the algorithms to get better medical information out there. You would still send Dr. Google to medical school. Tara, where do you go to get reliable medical news? So first and foremost, you can go to government sites like the CDC or the NIH. And then you can look at associations like the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, or reputable universities. Then I think people can really be trained to analyze what they're reading. So for example, look and see who the author is. Was this published in a peer-reviewed journal? Uh, who funded this study? Who's benefiting from it? Was it one study? Study, where you may not want to base your decisions on it, or was it multiple studies? How many subjects were studied? A hundred or 500,000? What kind of trial? An observational study? Not the best. Or a randomized control trial? Much better to make your decisions on. So, but just this morning, though, we had a story about doing 40 push-ups for men. Yes, I saw. Good for your heart. <laughs> so when you saw that, do you think that makes a lot of sense? Or do you think, oh, get out of here? Well, that's where you really need to do your digging, right? <laughs> we, we in the media, we love to put out these sensational headlines. And it's unfortunate for people because they see it 
it and they may buy into it. But that's where you really have to look at where who's doing this study. And you, you need to go to a source that can really break it down for you. So when you heard it, Dr. Tara Narula, <laughs> it's, good, it's a gauge, it's a measure. She's trying to figure out whether she has to go to the push. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to do as many I as I can, and whatever that number is, I'm going to Google it and hopefully find some good information. <laughs> can, can we just say that these two were classmates at Stanford in the same really? class? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. College yeah. classmates. This is the 97. first time that they've been on the thing. Did you all date back in college? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my God. no, they're both happily married, so we're not stuck. Gail's stirring it up. Nick, no. Nick, 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 real quick, how, how <laughs> spreading so much misinformation right here? Gail, I'm going to source the misinformation on the set. Settle, settle. To close it out here, Facebook says changes are coming soon. What's your over under on when soon is? I think they're probably working hard on them right now. Right now. All right. Okay. That is soon. All right. Tara, Nick, thank you guys <laughs> very much. Thank you. Classmates.